New York has a new governor. Kathy Hochul was sworn in Tuesday. She is the state's first woman governor. She took over after Andrew Cuomo resigned, following the release of a state attorney general's report backing multiple allegations of sexual harassment. Hochul outlined her top priorities in her first address as governor. This is a, uh, an emotional moment for me, but it is one that I prepared for, and I'm so looking forward to continuing the work we have to do. Uh, to that end, I spoke with President Biden last night to talk about a number of issues. He pledged his full support to my administration in anything we need. How will we be combating COVID, getting direct aid to New Yorkers more quickly, and changing the culture of Albany? And that's why I'm looking forward to a fresh, collaborative approach. It's how I've always conducted myself. It'll be nothing new for me, but it's something I'm planning on introducing to the state capitol. For more, I want to bring in Christine Quinn. She is a former New York City Council speaker and a former special advisor to Governor Andrew Cuomo. Christine, thank you for being here. I want to ask you about Andrew Cuomo in a moment. But you were the first woman to serve as speaker of the NYC Council. Kathy Hochul is now the state's first woman governor. What is your sense of where New York politics are heading, and what do you hope to see from Governor Hochul's administration? Well, this is a very important glass ceiling that has been broken, because the truth is, in New York, uh, we've had a lot of trouble electing women to chief executive roles. We've still never had a woman mayor of New York City. So Kathy's step forward is a big one. It follows a step forward by the New York City Council, which come January will be a majority women. So we are headed in the right direction, finally, in New York, as it relates to representation and I know and really believe that women and girls are going to see Kathy Hochul get sworn in on TV tonight, and it's going to inspire them. Because, you know, it's all said that if you can't see it, you don't know that you can be it. And now they know they can be the governor of the greatest state in the union. And I think Kathy is going to bring that inspiration and an opportunity, f bring that forward in her administration. As she said, I know her to be very collaborative, to be the kind of person who develops an agenda from the bottom up, not the top down. That's a change in Albany. And I think it's going to be a welcome one. Well, we know there are a number of challenges. What are some of the most pressing issues you believe Governor Hochul will face? A number of challenges is, is an understatement. Uh, first, obviously, is uh, restoring faith, New Yorkers' faith in government and in the governor's office. The circumstances around Governor Cuomo's resignation are so bad, she really has to bring people's faith back. And I think it's important that we note that, yet again, a woman has been brought in to clean up a man's mess. So that's job one. Two, the pandemic getting more New Yorkers vaccinated so we don't have a wave of COVID uh, uh, cases coming back in the state. Three, bringing back the economy, bringing back small businesses, and bringing the economy back in a way that's more inclusive of women and small businesses and people of color than it was before. So I'd say those are her top three jobs, each one enormous. Well, we know that Governor Hochul made it a point to address sexual harassment training in her first yes. speech. Let's go ahead and listen to some of what she said. With accountability and no tolerance for individuals who cross the line. Today, I'm directing an overhaul of state government policies on sexual harassment and ethics, starting with requiring that all training be done live instead of allowing people to click their way through a class. Christine, obviously, it is just day one, but what is your sense of the tone and tenor of what we're hearing from Governor Hochul on this issue so far? No, I thought that was the right tone. She had to mention the issue. If she hadn't, it would have just been a glaring omission. And she just didn't mention it rhetorically. She actually put uh, forward specific reforms that have been put in place. So I think that's important because, you know, on an issue like this, obviously, talk is cheap. That's not what she's done. She's already put reforms in place. And I think she's drawn a clear line in the sand of zero tolerance. And that's what it should be for sexual harassment. 
All right, as we mentioned, so back in 2015, you became a special advisor to then-Governor Andrew Cuomo. You believed he would champion women's issues. Can you tell us, Christine, what was your impression of Andrew Cuomo at the time, and what was your reaction once that attorney general report came out? Well, you know, in 2015, I was a special advisor on the issue of legislation to address rape and sexual assault on college campuses. And I actually worked hand in glove with then Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul, and we got that legislation passed. It was the strongest in the nation at the time. So I really believed, as I think most New Yorkers did, that Andrew Cuomo was one of the best allies that women and girls had anywhere in the country. So when the attorney general's report came out, I was honestly stunned. I mean, it's irrefutable. It's clear what has happened. All 11 cases, you know, affirmed by the outside investigators. But it is it was shocking. It was just shocking and so different than who I thought Andrew Cuomo was. And it was really um, well, it, it left me feeling a bit manipulated, I have to say. Because I just have to ask, there was nothing in your interactions with him that suggested behavior as uh, laid out in that attorney general report was was possible, is, is what it sounds no, like. No, nothing in our interactions. But remember, I was always interacting with him as an elected official or a former elected official. So I don't think uh, he would have uh, taken that level of risk. Mm -hmm. Finally, Christine, before we let you go, I have to ask, are you considering a run for New York governor next year? And if so, what are you factoring into your decision? Oh, you know, I'm right now the, the CEO and president of Win Women in Need. We're the largest provider of shelter and permanent supportive housing to homeless families, women with children. There's more homeless children in New York City than there are seats in the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. So my state focus right now is getting the governor to take that issue on uh, aggressively, and I'm very optimistic she will. Okay, but I did not hear a no for the record, Christine Quinn. <laughs> that you're you're not ruling it out is the way I take that. <laughs> All right, Christine Quinn, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Take care. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Thanks. Absolutely.